Okay, let's get into this problem, all right? And you can see here I have a rectangle, and this side is x, and this side is x plus 8. And I'm told that the area of this rectangle is 20 square inches, okay, 20 inches squared. But I want to find the perimeter of this rectangle. So how do we do this problem? Well, I'm going to teach you exactly how to do this problem so you can be one of those top students in your math class and your teacher will give you like a big smiley face and several stars and 100% and probably an A++ if you just knock out this problem on a quiz or a test. This is a classic kind of algebra problem or test question. So you definitely want to know how to do this. Okay. Now, a couple of things that we're going to be uh, doing in this uh, problem, okay, as part of the solution, is we're going to be um, setting up an equation, right? So you got to know something about equations and, in particular, a quadratic equations. So if you need help with any of these particular topics, then, you know, don't panic, all right? Just make some mental notes, use it as feedback uh, to improve, okay? So I'll give you some specific suggestions on all of that in just one second. But first, let me go ahead and quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Uh, of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, I offer literally uh, well over 100 different uh, math courses, Okay, many of, of which are uh, test preparation courses, things like for the GED, SAT, GRE, GMAT, um, teacher certification, uh, college placement uh, type of things, homeschool courses, full courses in Algebra 2, Algebra 1, Geometry, etc. So, you, you know, a lot, a lot of... Uh, you know, as effort has gone into for me to build out these full uh, platforms. So if you need to take a full course, okay, you can definitely take one of my courses, or if you need to prepare for a test or an exam, you can uh, check out my library. You'll likely have what you're looking for. But um, uh, anyways, my thing is this. If you need help in mathematics, do something about your situation. Go get a tutor if you're at a um, uh, in college, for example, Okay, go uh, to the math department and ask for help. They'll give you some specific advice. Or if you're in a high school student, always definitely start with your teacher. Okay, don't, don't be, I would just say, let me just stop myself here. Whatever you do, always speak to your teacher first to get your uh, help. Now, above and beyond that, then you can consider programs, let's say like mine or a tutor. Okay, all right. But one thing you can't consider is not taking notes. This is my golden rule of teaching math uh, for decades is this. It's just I've seen it thousands and thousands of times over and over uh, play out. Those students who take the best math notes almost always get the best math grades. And um, those students who are too busy to take notes in class because they're talking to their best buddy or maybe they're on their cell phone or uh, maybe they're doing their homework for the class that they got next. You get that drift. You know, listen, I was a student once and, uh, you know, of course, I didn't have a cell phone. But if I did have a cell phone back in the good old days, I'm sure I would be on it and not paying attention to what I'm supposed to be doing. But listen, you're going to pay a price uh, for not taking notes. So do the right thing. If you're going to learn math, it's worth learning the right way. Take great notes. The better your notes are, the better your grades are going to be. Guarantee that. Okay. But in the meantime, you need something to study from. So I offer detailed, comprehensive math notes to include pre algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find a link uh, to all those notes in the description of this video as well. Okay. So let's get into this problem. Again, we're talking about a uh, very classic type of algebra problem. Okay. And I would say eh, this is something definitely like at the algebra one level. But um, Anyways, if you're not in Algebra 1, you stick around because you're going to learn something anyways. All right, so let's go down here and just kind of think about this problem here for a second. So I have a rectangle. looks like a rectangle. I'm telling you it's a rectangle, but technically if I wanted to just like tell you this is a rectangle, let's just do some quick geometry. I could put some right angle things in here. So I'm like, okay, this is a rectangle. And I could maybe put in, well, this would not be enough if you're familiar with geometry notation because this could be a parallelogram. So i got to have these 90-degree uh, little um, notation here to verify to, if this is a rectangle. If you weren't told this is a rectangle, you should have this 
in the figure. Okay, but I'm telling you it's a re rectangle, so you can just blame me on this one. So we have a rectangle, and uh, I'm being told that the area is 20 inches squared. I'm just going to write 20 here for a second. Um, but what do we need to do here? Well, when you're solving a problem in algebra, right, almost you know 90% of the time is we, we need to set up some sort of equation. Okay, and to set up an equation here, we need to know some basic stuff about the area of a rectangle. All right, so what is the area of the re of a rectangle? What is the formula for that? Well, hopefully you remember, it's just simply the length times the width. Okay, so if I multiply this times this, that will give me the area. Okay, and I know what the area is, it's 20. So you should be able to set up a basic equation. Okay, so what do you think it is? Well, come on now. You, you can do it. Yeah, I just kind of told you how to do it, right? The length times the width is uh, the area, and the area is 20. So let's go ahead and do that now. So it's just going to be this times this, all right? So x times x plus 8. Oh, well, that's a terrible 8. Okay, 8, that's a little bit better. And that is going to be equal to our area, okay, which is, of course, 20, okay? So this is our equation, all right? So that's step number one in a problem like this is to figure out what information you have, right, to create or develop uh, to write some sort of equation that involves the variables that you're interested in knowing. So how do I um, answer this question? Because the question is the perimeter, okay? You're like, well, we're focusing on the perimeter. Well, I can't find the perimeter of this rectangle until I actually have the dimensions here, right? So if you don't know what the perimeter is, the perimeter is when we, and let me use a different color, is when I add up this side with this side and this side and this side, okay? So I have to add up all those uh, sides, but I can't add up anything right now because I don't know the dimensions. But if I can find out the actual dimensions of this rectangle, then I can find the perimeter, okay? And how do I find the dimensions of that rectangle? Well, I got to solve for x. And how do I solve for x? Well, I have to have x involved in some equation. So now, Really, this comes down to your ability to be able to solve this equation. And once we have that value for x, we can kind of plug that back in, and then we can get the perimeter. Okay, so now let's get into part two of this problem, and that is to solve the equation. All right, we've got to solve for x, and we've got to solve this equation. So in algebra, yeah, by the way, if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. And if you're liking this video so far, you know, it's not a bad idea just to hit that like button, too. That would help me out. But um, I stress a lot, you know, the, your ability to recognize different type of equations in algebra. Okay, so what type of equation is this? Well, there's a lot of different type of equations in algebra. We have linear equations. We have quadratic equations. We have radical equations, rational equations, system of equations, exponential equations, logarithmic equations. You get the drift. There's a lot of different type of equations. You got to be able to recognize what you're dealing with because uh, how you solve uh, for this type of equation is not how you solve for this type of equation, or not how you solve for this type of equation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's why you got to be paying attention, right? You got to be taking notes on all this and studying this stuff, or you're going to be uh, thoroughly confused. But in here, hopefully, you recognize that this is a quadratic equation. Okay, so. We have to have, we have x times x plus 8 is equal to 20, right? We know this is because of our understanding of area. So how do you solve this quadratic equation? Well, we're going to have to set uh, it equal to 0, okay? So remember, with quadratic equations, you want to set everything equal to 0. And if you are um, unsure about quadratic equations, I have plenty of videos on quadratic equations in my algebra playlist. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and multiply here x times uh, x, that's x squared, and then we have x times 8, that's 8x, and then I have my 20 over here, but I'm going to move my 20 over to the other side of the equation because I want to set this equal to 0. So now, here is this quadratic equation, uh, very beautiful, it's sitting right there for us to solve. So how do we solve this uh, quadratic equation like this? Well, you got a couple uh, choices here, okay? One, you always see if you can factor this guy. You always want to try to factor quadratic equations because that is the most direct uh, uh, approach, the best approach. Okay, but if you can't factor, right, something like this, a trinomial, then we have a fallback uh, plan. And what is that? Yes, you are on top of it. That would be the quadratic 
formula, all right? So if you can't factor, mm, it's not factorable, then we're going to have to go uh, and use the quadratic formula. But bottom line is that there are solutions to this equation, okay? Because if you can't factor it, well, then we'll, we'll have to get those solutions using the quadratic formula. And remember, with quadratic equations, there's always, always, always two solutions, okay? So um, if you're kind of familiar with quadratic equations or don't really remember them, you need to really, really know this stuff, okay? So again, have plenty of videos on that, uh, quadratic equations and quadratic formula in my algebra playlist. And of course, I teach this thoroughly in my algebra courses as well. But luckily for us, we can factor this trinomial, and that is a whole nother uh, skill set, right? So we don't have to worry about the quadratic formula because we, in fact, can factor this, all right? Now, how did we factor this? Well, this is x plus 10 times x minus 2. If you don't know how to factor, you don't know how I factored this, well, check out some of my videos on factoring trinomials because, yeah, as you can see, there's a lot of skills with, uh, there's a lot of subskills here, right? You got to know how to factor, right? You got to know how to use a quadratic formula. You got to know what you're dealing with, all right? So use this video as feedback. Don't panic, right? Don't don't be like, oh my goodness, you know, I'm never going to be able to do this. You don't, you know, don't have that expression. What you need to do is just make some mental notes. Be like, okay, I don't know how to factor, and I need to review the quadratic formula. Go back, take a deep breath, and work on those things that you need to improve on, right? All right, bottom line is this. X squared plus 8X minus 20 is, uh, this trinomial is factorable into X plus 10 times uh, X minus 2. Okay, and that's, of course, equal to zero. Now, here, okay, we love to have uh, problems set up this way because this is a factor. This is something, okay, being multiplied by something else and the answer is zero, all right? If I said, hey, I have something times something else and the answer is zero, can you tell me about these two numbers? Okay, you would be like, well, the only way you can get this answer, if the answer is zero, is either this number or both of these numbers is, in fact, zero. And that is correct, okay? So x plus 10, what we do is we set each factor equal to zero. So we have x plus 10 equal to zero, and I solve that equation. That's uh, When I do that, I get x is equal to negative 10, okay? So that's one answer. They have x minus 2. Let's kind of erase some of this stuff here. Just do a quick review. Of course, I could you know, teach about all of this all day long, but I don't want to make this video too long. So we're going to set x minus 2 equal to 0 and solve by adding 2 to both sides. I get x is equal to 2. So here's my two solutions, x equals 2 and x equals negative 10. Remember, when you're dealing with a quadratic equation, you always have two solutions, and here uh, they are. Okay, x equals 2 and x equals negative 10. Now, how do we know which one is the correct one to choose for our problem? Okay, because here is our lovely rectangle, and, you know, can both of these work? Well, no, we need to throw out this guy, x equals negative 10, because that's not going to be applicable, because we're talking about measurements of a rectangle, right? We don't want to have, we're not going to be thinking about negative 10 inches, right? So we can throw that one out, and we'll just keep this one, okay, x equals positive 2. So let's check it, uh, see if this is correct, right? So if x is equal to 2... And this would be, what, x, uh, x plus 8. So this is really 2 plus 8. So 2 plus 8 is 10. Okay, so this whole length here is 10. My width here is 2. So 2 times 10 is, in fact, the area of this is 2 times 10. And that is 20. Remember, that's what I was told. Okay, that's a terrible 20, by the way. This one is a little bit better. Okay, so it uh, looks like we did this correct. All right, so now... We know the actual dimensions here of our rectangle, all right? So this would be 2, and this would be 10. So we got to think back on the question. The question is, what is the perimeter, okay? So the perimeter is going to be this side plus this side plus this side plus this side, okay? So this would be 2 plus 10. What's this side over here? This is 2, and this side is also 10 because this is a rectangle. So let's just go ahead and do this. It's 2 plus 10 plus 2 plus another 10. And of course, I know you're up to speed on your basic arithmetic. Let's see, 10 and 10, that's 20. And 2 and 2 is 4. So if we did this right, that would be 24 what? Okay, we've got to think about units of measure. Inches, because our area was in inches squared, 
Okay, the the lengths here would be in inches, and that is our answer. Okay, so uh, hopefully you know this problem went well for you. Okay, and you understood all the aspects of uh, you know everything we did here. And if you didn't understand anything, no big deal. Okay, you're still a superstar if you're like um, thinking, mm, I need to review this, this, and this. Listen. Learning math is a process. It's never ending, by the way, too, because I'm learning all the time. All right. But the thing about it is this uh, you're not going to be able to really learn and retain this stuff unless you're practicing and taking good notes. You know, I'm not, you know, of course, I'm stressing, hey, check out my notes and that kind of thing like that. Look, I want you to have your own notes. Okay. This is why in most math classes, you, you get there's a percentage of your grade. Uh, based on your notes, right? That's pretty common. Sometimes like 5% of your grade, maybe 10%, okay? Because teachers know, and they just know by experience, they want you to take great notes, right? It's important, and it's something that you got to do, you know, every day. But listen, the whole idea behind a video like this from me to you is to help you improve. And you can learn this stuff, and you will be, and I'm sure you already are, uh, awesome in math. It's there. We're just waiting to come out. So if you like this video, enjoyed it in some manner, please consider smashing the like button. That would, uh, you know, help me out. And if you're new again to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. Been on YouTube for a long time, have hundreds and hundreds of videos. Uh, it's a great platform for me to uh, share what I know about math. My objective is always to teach math in a clear and understandable way. I'm obsessed with helping you. So those videos are there for you. And I'm posting new stuff all the time, basic to advanced math. But if you want my best math help, you know where to go. Check out the links in the description of this video. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.